Good morning, everyone. How are you guys? Um, we're going to leave a few minutes for people to pop in. So you can just right now say in the chat where you are joining from. And we will just give people just a few seconds to just pop in here. So let's see in the chat where you guys are joining us from. So I see we've got Charleston. Awesome. I know Andy is in Charleston. We got Dallas, Texas. So fun. Nevada, California, Minnesota. Charleston, Daniel Island. Where is Daniel Island? I've is that near Charleston? It's in Charles. It's in Charleston. I'm technically in Daniel Island as well now. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Got Hampstead, Alabama, oh, so Mount fun. Pleasant, all these so local fun. Charlestonians. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, just share in the chat where you're joining from. We're so excited that you guys are here. Give everyone a few seconds. You guys are like right on time, which is so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's I know so I fun. popped on. I popped on and I was like, oh my gosh, people are already here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, oh, oh someone's that? from New Zealand. Wow. Yeah, Trisha. <laughs> That's amazing. It's got to be like three o'clock in the morning there or something like crazy. Um, yeah. I remember last Ardently course, we had a woman joining from Australia and it was 2 a.m. there and she'd be like in the dark and oh. her husband would be like quietly, like sneaking around. <laughs> so that uh, is wild. Said, That's commitment. Amazing. All right. So yeah. we'll just leave one more minute and then we'll get started. Who is so excited for this course? I know. Yeah. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> so fun. LA. Amazing. It's going to be so fun. So what we're going to do is just so you guys know every week, um, this is recorded. So within 24 hours, it will be um, on the Jesse Green website. So you can log in at any time and access that whenever. So um, if there's ever a week you can't join, um, you can just pop in onto that. So I am going to get this started. I'm going to pin Andy and I. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Good morning. How are you doing? Hi. I know. I'm good. How are you? Been up for a while. Excited. Praying. Praying over myself. <laughs> Walking <laughs> through all the things we're going to teach because I need it too. <laughs> so real. But yeah, been doing good. How about you? Good. Really good. I, yesterday, my baby did not want to sleep. So it was one mm. of those days, but we're here and <laughs> we're making it. So I'm so excited. Um, we have, I think close to 90 women that are doing this course, which is so fun. Um, so yeah. I'm really excited. So I'm going to kind of just, um, quickly just run you guys through some announcements um, and then we'll pop into this. So um, really quickly, make sure that you are getting our emails. If you are not getting any of our emails, um, either you entered your email incorrectly or there's something wrong with our system. So if you're not getting our emails, make sure you email team at saturateglobal.com. That's team at saturateglobal.com. And they can make sure that you do get our emails. So there'll be lots of updates, fun giveaways, et cetera. But if you're not getting your emails and you have no idea what's going on. So um, that is the first thing. Um, the second thing is this week only up until the 31st. So we will make this course, this week of the course public. So we'll put it on YouTube and make it accessible to anyone. You can share it with your friends and you can give your friends a discount of $20 off and they have to use promo code friend and that works until the 31st. And I know what you're thinking, cause this is what I always think when there's a promo, I'm like, Hey, that's not fair. Like I signed up and now I'm not getting the discount because <laughs> I don't know if you feel like that, but that's how I always feel. So if you refer a friend, um, we will send you this really cute ardently water bottle, which is total nineties vibes. 
I was like, <laughs> I ordered these because everyone's drinking the Stanleys. And I'm like, I'm, a, I don't know if I'm like any of you, but I'm like, I'm a rebellious person sometimes with trends. And I'm like, well, now I'm not going to drink the Stanley because everyone else is <laughs> drinking the Stanley. So, um, <laughs> yeah, see, that's a custom Stanley, but, um, I got these ardently water bottles and they like reminded me of the nineties, like a nineties workout video. And I love them. So yeah. if you refer a friend, um, we will send you this water bottle. So you just need to let our team know. So again, you will email team at saturateglobal.com if you refer to friend and we will send these out to you. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Next thing. So we're doing another giveaway on social media and we're going to give you guys another week to participate just because a lot of you just signed up last night or even this morning. And so I don't want you to feel like you didn't get to participate in that giveaway just because you signed up late. So um, the giveaway is to share about Ardently on social media. So I am going to share with all of you a little folder in the chat. And that folder has a bunch of graphics. We made it super easy for you. You can just download one of those graphics or if you're like really like adventurous, you can just take a selfie right now, like on this call, just like this, and just take <laughs> a picture of you on the course and just tag Andy and I um, on Instagram. And then what we're gonna do is for every single one of those people, we're gonna choose five winners. And the five winners are going to receive one of our really cute little Ardently hats. So I will share in the chat. Um, you can see the Ardently hat there. Um, and so we will choose five people to win that hat. Um, so that giveaway is happening now. And then we'll end that and pick a winner next week. Um, and then the last thing is, I don't know, some of you guys saw my teaser on social media, but um, I have done, oh, it just got really dark because I turned, um, but I have done a collaboration with Growth Book, which is my favorite journal in the world. I don't know who else. Give me a wave if you use Growth Book journals. They're the absolute best, um, but we did a collaboration and it is now live on the website. We only have 300 copies of it. So it's super limited edition, but it's a revival journal. So it's gold leather, which I don't know if you can totally see the color here, but it's super shiny and pretty. Um, and I'm like obsessed with it. And then I, it has just all these really cool things, but, um, little Bible verses, revival quotes throughout it. And then there's these add in pages um, to activate yourself in revival. So I'm super excited about that journal because I use growth book journals and then they reach out to me to do a collab. And I was just stoked because I am probably one of their biggest customers. So um, the <laughs> link for that is in the chat too. And then the last announcement I have before we get started um, oh, Wendy, I saw you ordered one. I'm so excited for you. Um, okay, last announcement. So October 12th, save the date. Put the date in your calendar, October 12th. Everyone, say it out loud, even though I can't he hear you. October 12th. October 12th, um, so you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so October 12th, Lou Engel is rallying a million women at the National Mall in Washington, D.C. So he is rallying a million women to stand for the future of America, to stand for our kids, um, to stand for our rights as Christian women, the rights for families to protect their children, meaning that, you know, the government can't just take your kids and change their genders like we're seeing in California, which is so crazy that that can even be a thing. And it's just nuts. And so um, he's been carrying this prophetic word um, for since 1999, which is crazy. And he believed that now is the time he got the permits for October 12th at the National Mall, which is really crazy right before an election season to even be able to get that. So it's a total God thing. So 
That being said, um, we are doing a Zoom call tomorrow um, and I will share with you how to sign up for that Zoom call tomorrow at 1 p.m. Um, there is a form I just shared right there um, about how you can get involved, how you can mobilize the women in your life. I know a lot of you lead ministries or lead other women. So there are prayer hubs that you can start getting involved with. Um, if your church or your ministry wants to get involved, um, we're going to be doing lots of pre-rallies all around the country. If you're like my church would definitely want to host a pre-rally, then let us know if you're like my ministry wants to get on board with this. Um, but we need all hands on deck. So I'm like putting all of our saturated and salt eggs in this basket because um, I truly believe this is a Kairos moment. And it's one of those things where if we can lay down our own agendas for the sake of a nation, um, I know the Lord's like, I want you to use like your resources, your influence, your time, your effort, your energy. Um, because Lou Engel, Dutch Sheets, Jonathan Kahn, if you know any of those people, they really believe that the women are the ones that are going to be able to shift this nation. Um, because if we look at the lies being clues, the enemy is violently coming after women in this age. And so we need not feminist, but feminine women that know who they are and walk in power and authority to rise up. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I know all of the ardently women will be there and we'll be baptizing women in pickup trucks, right? And it's going to be fire. I told Lou, I was <laughs> like, just so you know, I was like, we will pray and we will rally. But we will also cast out demons, heal the sick, and raise the dead at the National Mall because our late women are the wild ones. We are on fire, and it's going to be awesome. So we already <laughs> are picking out which pickup trucks to bring because baptizing a million women at the mall is going to require a lot of pickup trucks. So um, so if you have a pickup truck as well, let us know. Um, but anyway... <laughs> I can't wait to see you guys on the Zoom. It will be recorded, but you'll also want to be there because there's something about showing up that is different um, than watching a video. So um, who is excited for Fire and Freedom? I would love for you to share in the chat um, before we get started, um, why this course? Like, why was this the one? I know some of you, I see a lot of familiar faces have done all the Ardently courses, but I want to know this one, like, what were you hoping to get out of this? What were you excited about? What did you see that you were like, yeah, like this, this is it. So Andy, I would love for you as people are sharing in the chat to kind of share your heart behind being a part of this course in particular. Absolutely. I, what's so fun though, is seeing like some people that I know, like Mary, it's good to see you. And Shirley, I can't believe it. Cher was in, well, she says, it says Ruby Smith, but <laughs> Cher was actually in my wedding and uh, we did ministry school together. It's so crazy. I love like how these worlds come together and I have a lot of hopes for this. And I love seeing, even if it's just one word that you are hoping for, what you want to get out of this. Um, but Hey, we are hoping for a lot of things. And if you're wondering why Jesse and I are coming together, Jesse and I go way back. Um, and I am so grateful for who she is in my life. And I'm really praying that what we can bring together and pour out is going to bring more freedom, more healing, more deliverance that you'll walk in the authority that maybe you've been struggling to walk in. Cause I know for me, that was a huge thing for me through a lot of my life walking with Jesus is I'm like, I have read the Bible time and time again. How come I am not seeing what the Bible says happen in my life. And my prayer is that that is something that's going to happen happen for all of you. But I know um, with Jesse and I, I mean, we, gosh, how many years have we known each other now? <laughs> I don't even know. I think it's like almost 14. Yeah, almost 14 years. And um, if you want to know a little bit more of our story, because we're not going to dive into that, what I want to do now is just create expectation. But I uh, we talk a lot about our story on my podcast, Coffee with Andy. We have a hot topic series where we talk about revival. We talk about deliverance and women in ministry. And we'll probably touch on a lot of those topics here too in different ways. 
Um, but we really are hoping um, wh wherever you feel apathetic, maybe too, or a heaviness in your walk with Jesus, that that'll lift off. That there's a reason why we're calling it fire and freedom. We want you to walk in the fire of God. We want you to walk in passion. That's what ardently really means. Um, and so if you're already a part of the ardently community, that's amazing. If you're not, I would encourage you to join it. I know that Jesse in my life, she is my sister-in-law, but she kicks my butt all the time and loves me so well. And we need people in our life that will kick our butts and love us well. Um, at the same time, she's one of my first phone calls or voice memos when I'm walking through something or I am spiritually going, I'm not seeing clearly. Can you help me see clearly? And I'm praying that that's what we'll do for one another, that we will be able to impart an input into you to help you see clearer, see the word clearer, to walk in fire, to walk in freedom. And so basically this is going to be a little bit of our own hot topics uh, as we go along. <laughs> There's going to be stuff where we're like, ooh, we're going to talk about that. And we want to hear from you in the Q&A. So we're going to take some time to teach and to pour out in each session. And then we're definitely going to get Q&A from you guys. And a lot of times those Q&A sometimes direct us to a whole nother place that we want to go because there's a great need for it. So um, Jess, are there any of these that you're seeing? I love seeing this. Fire and Freedom, Learning to Walk in Authority. Um, oh, and some of you did listen to the podcast. That's so cool. And yeah, it um, seems yeah. like a lot of people are really wanting to dive into freedom and healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just so excited for you because the reality is, is both Andy and I know that it's possible and it's available. Mm -hmm. And so wherever the enemy has been lying to you, we want to dismantle that stuff because I think yeah. the more truth, you know, the more you can kind of step into those things. Sorry, my camera is having like issues right now. My our friend Angel is trying to fix it. That's fine right now. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> I'm like, for some reason, I'm looking very blue, um, but it is mm. totally fine. <laughs> I promise it's fine. you guys, I'm, I'm not fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, well, yeah, it, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, I'm going to hand it over to Jesse, but the last thing I wanted to say is really today where we want to start is um, helping you to walk in authority and, and paying attention to the agreements that you're making. So um, I'm going to delve in personally to a little bit of deliverance training and freedom training. Um, Jesse is too going to talk about freedom and then we're going to lead into a couple of other things. So uh, if you're taking notes on your computer, get ready, but you get to watch the video again. But um, do you mind if I pray Jess as we yeah, dive in? Perfect. All right. Well, Holy Spirit, we just invite you to maneuver and speak to us and through us that we as a community of ardently women that are just wanting more of you, Lord, that you would do just that. We open ourselves up. I would just encourage you to even open your hands and just say, we want more and we want what you have to give us, Lord. So Holy Spirit, we just ask that you pour out right now that you have your way, that even Jesse and I will just know where to go and what to do as we follow your lead. So have your way in this time that we have together in Jesus name. Amen. Over to Amen. you, Jess. Amen. All right. So um, just so you know, too, there's obviously so much to cover, um, and that's why you guys engaging in the chat is so important for us because, you know, we may be planning to go one way, and we really want to help meet your needs. So if there's things that you're hoping for, like, make sure to ask in the Q&A. So if you have questions, like, be writing them down as we're talking, um, and then also in future weeks, we can make sure to maybe even pivot some of the material to help answer the things that you're really like yearning to know. So if we talk like touch on deliverance or touch on Jezebel or these different things, and you're like, man, I'm just like dying to like learn more about that. Just let us know, like don't hold back. And I would hate for you to finish these six weeks and be like, God, like, I still don't know this. So make sure to just share with us. Um, okay. So I want to first talk to you about learning the truth, um, because I think it's super important that we have a correct kingdom mindset when it comes to freedom. And uh, as many of you know, and some of you are brand new here, and it's so fun to see all the new people that I don't know yet. Um, but one of the things that we do all the time in our ministry is a lot of deliverance. 
um, especially in baptisms. We have baptized over 15,000 people in the last three years, which has been a great boot camp um, to teach us what we don't know. And uh, as we've done thousands of deliverances, one of the main, um, I would say, connecting factors that we started to witness was the problem in most Christians, especially in America, was that they didn't really have an understanding when it came to spiritual warfare. And like many of you and many of the people that we've prayed for at Saturate events, and myself included, I was believing a lie that the enemy had more authority than he actually has. And like many of you, you know, I think we believe that if we're struggling with depression, struggling with anxiety, struggling with suicidal thoughts, struggling with just like weird things in our head, that it's this battle that we need to be dealing with. Some of us believe that we need to deal with it for a lifetime, whether it's a medical diagnosis um, or trauma or our experiences. And from what I've seen and what have I, I've experienced, I fully believe that you can live 100% free, meaning that Jesus died for you to live completely free. So some of us, it's a journey. Some of it's instant, but I believe that we should be contending and pushing for a hundred percent freedom, meaning like no lingering thoughts of anxiety, no lingering thoughts of depression, right? And so what we want to do is bring you on a journey towards a hundred percent freedom. So I'm hoping that within the six weeks here that we get there, but if we don't fully get there, I hope that we give you tools to help you to continually fight for that 100%, okay? So I want you to just put in the chat right now, just say, I'm in for 100%. And the reason why I want you to do that is what you're doing right now is just making an agreement that goes with the agreement of heaven and against the agreement of hell. And honestly, that's sometimes the biggest hurdle is for people to just say that they agree with God. They agree with that healing. So I'm going to read to you quickly from Matthew 28. So if you have your Bible, um, I would say every week show up with your Bible unless you're in the car. But if you have your Bible, just wave your Bible at me. So extra points if you have your Bible. Awesome. So let's go to Matthew 28. Well, that was so crazy. I like just opened up to like the page before. I feel like that's like Holy Spirit magic when that happens. So Matthew 28. Okay, so I would say that after like John 3, 16, Matthew 28, verse 16 um, on is probably the most like famous scripture. But um, I think sometimes we we know it in our heads, right? But we don't know it in our spirit. And so we know that we're supposed to fulfill the great commission as a believer. We're supposed to walk in dunamis power. We're supposed to see miracles. We're supposed to see salvations. We're supposed to walk in freedom ourselves, right? But I don't think we totally have an understanding of what Matthew 28 is saying. So I'm going to read this to you, Matthew 28, verse 18. Okay, so this is resurrected Jesus. Like this is Jesus alive. He is like, like he is the Messiah. He's proven now that he's the Messiah. He's not just a great teacher. He's not just a great prophet. This is like Jesus Christ and Lord, according to Acts 2. Like this is the one that the father has sent. This is like Emmanuel, God with us. He sends us the promise of the Holy Spirit. So that Jesus says this and is saying this now because we know the word of God is alive, right? This is living. So he didn't just say this then. He is saying this right now on the ardently call. He says, he says all authority. Okay, so I want you to write in the chat, all authority. So 100% authority. So write in the chat, all authority. And the reason why this is so important is you need to look at yourself in the mirror every day because this is what I had to do and this will help you. When the enemy starts to lie to you, you need to know the truth. So when I start to feel the enemy getting in my head or I'm about to preach and the weird thoughts start coming in, I need to look at myself in the mirror and say, no, no, no. Jesus said 
all authority, which means that someone has no authority and that someone is Satan, okay? So the main thing that we need to remember in these six weeks, okay, because listen, we are going to trigger you. All the weird stuff is going to come up. And I say, good, let it come up. Let us bother you. Let us push on the idols. Let us like tinker with the things that you believed you need to hold on to, right? Because the Holy Spirit's going to push on that because you signed up for freedom in this course, right? So all the little things are going to get messed with. Because the Holy Spirit is answering our prayers and the enemy is looking for your agreement for permission to keep you captive. So we need to remember he has no authority if you're a Christian, right? Because Jesus says all authority has been given to me, meaning Jesus. He's like, I have all authority now. Like I defeated death. I defeated the power of sin. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but you don't have to live in sin anymore. Like the entanglements of sin, that's a big hard one, especially in the American church, that you can actually, according to the word of God, live free from sin. So not just free from attack, but free from sinning, which is so crazy. I'm like, oh man, imagine how different the American church, right, would look if we actually lived free from sin. It'd be like, we'd be like actually ambassadors of this new kingdom. So he says, so all authority in heaven and on earth. So sometimes we believe that Jesus only has authority in heaven. We don't actually believe that he has authority here on earth. So we pray to God like he is up here and that he, we know he's seated right right next to the father God, but we believe that he has no authority down here. We're waiting for him to have authority here. And again, that's a lie, right? He has all authority here on earth. And he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded to you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. So a lot of us, I think, struggle with sharing the gospel, struggle making disciples, struggle walking in newness of life because we don't have the revelation of him having all authority, right? And so I've been like verbally processing with Parker like all day where I'm like, man, I think we would share the gospel so much more if we realized the authority that we actually had. Because what you believe is what you actually do, right? So not what you say you believe, but what you actually believe in your mind. So if you believe in your mind, right, that Jesus can set captives free, then when you see someone on the street, right, that's manifesting, that's demonically oppressed, right, you would have this unction in you to go up to them and pray for them to be delivered, Right. But the reason we don't do that is because we're in this like little battle of the mind as we're out there. And we're like, oh, is God really going to set them free? I'm not totally walking in freedom myself. And sorry, I just got a little hiccup. So uh, the reality is, is that we need to and we'll teach you about this as we go through these six weeks. But we need to know the word of God. And we need to spend time in the secret place. The secret place is just that place where you close the door, you get alone with Jesus, and you allow the Holy Spirit to breathe on this, right? Because it's not about just knowing the word. You need revelation, and you need that to come down into you. So right now, before I transition this to Andy, I want you to put your hand on your head and your hand on your heart, okay? And you can pray this over yourself every day. When I read the word of God, this is what I do. And you can pray this right now with me to say, Holy Spirit. And you can repeat Holy Spirit. And you say, give me vision and give me revelation. Speak the truth to me, Lord God. Teach me your ways and transform my mind and transform my heart. Thank you, Jesus. And I just want to encourage you guys, when you read the word of God, it doesn't have to be this 
mundane ritual. It doesn't have to be this habitual thing. Like the Lord is in the word. He is breathing on the word, but it's hard to understand the word if we don't have vision and we don't have revelation. We need the Holy Spirit to bring these words to life to us. And that's when we read it. And all of a sudden, has anyone, and you can give me a wave, has anyone read the Bible? And all of a sudden it's like a verse pops out or like you see something and you're like, I've read that verse a thousand times and I've never seen it like that before. Guys, that's God speaking to you. That is him saying, yes, 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 yes. That's it. Push on that. And then we just like go into our day and ignore it. I want to encourage you when he's highlighting something to you, right? Like take all day to ruminate on it. I know like we can be in the car picking up our kids, but I know for me for six months, I've been just ruminating on this fact that Jesus has all authority. Like that changes everything. Do I really believe that he has all authority? Do I believe that I'm being sent out in that same authority? Like, what does that change for me? Like, how does that change the way that I live? And so I'm going to pop this over to Andy now. So Andy, I'm unmuting you. Hey. <laughs> Hi. So let's oh just my pop gosh. in there. <laughs> yeah, I, someone wants you, if you can, that head and heart prayer, if there, if you even want to just write that in there for him, I know they can go back and watch the video, but I'll um, put it in the course, there you go. Yeah. We're going to put a whole bunch of notes in there too, that we've, we've put down for you guys. So you can look at them. Cause I know there's some visual people that afterwards you're like, I can't write down everything. <laughs> um, but even as you were saying that Jess at the beginning of this year, my daughter, who's 15, um, you know, she really is wanting breakthrough in worry and wanting to control and be perfect. Right. And so I just sense like the Lord was giving her Philippians four through for the year, you know, don't worry about anything instead, pray about everything and the peace that passes all understanding will God, your heart and mind. So I give her this and you better believe this is the most fun thing to watch with your kids as you train them up in this stuff. She's like, everywhere we go, she's like, mom, I opened a book and that scripture was there. Mom, someone preached a word. Mom, someone gave a word. And I just want us to remain with that childlikeness, even as we lean into this course, like that doesn't have to leave us. We can have that childlikeness where we're just excited about God speaking in the tiny little threads of everything. So, um, I love what Jesse said. She said, pay attention to where you're being triggered, pay attention to what's coming up for you. It's almost like one of her favorite things to do is to like poke and it's what, it, and that's one of the things I love about Jess is that she's like, I'm just going to go ahead and poke that. Um, and what I have realized, and maybe you have as well, is that throughout the years of following Jesus, have you noticed that when you get poked by something and you're bothered and you're, I mean, the word that we use these days is triggered is you can figure out why it's everybody else's fault, except for your own. <laughs> so you can explain it away instead of walking and healing. And, um, but if all authority has been given to us and none has been given to the enemy, what does that actually mean for our lives? I've been doing some deliverance training. Jesse and I are in a course called raising profits and it's a year long course that we're, we're taking together. We are going to intensives in Europe, all of these different things that we're learning together. But one of the side courses that I chose to do was about casting out demons and deliverance. And I was like, I want to know more about this. And the way Emma Stark, that's her name, Emma Stark makes this course so clear is that she's like, she's such like a straight shooter, but she also just preaches scripture. And she's like the same thing Jesse just said. She's like, hello, if all authority has been given to Jesus and he gives you all authority and sends you out, then that means the devil has none. So what are we so afraid of? And she was even talking about some of the deliverance sessions she does where she'll sit with people and her partners and like, People are like, oh, I'm so scared to walk into this. And she's like, oh, no, the demons don't get to like talk about how this this is going to go. I will speak to how this session is going to go. And I'm like, come on. So just learning what authority we have changes everything. So what I'm going to talk about for um, a few minutes until I go back to Jesse I, for about 10 minutes, five, 10 or about 10 minutes is discovering areas for us that need freedom, deliverance, or healing. Where do we need freedom, deliverance, and healing? Can we pay attention to that? 
Because when we take authority in those areas of our life and we break detrimental agreements, what we find is then those things that we have now and the ways that we're walking in freedom is stuff that we can give away to other people. And so um, pay attention throughout the seasons of your life. I mean, I was thinking about how I don't know about you. I got saved and then I'm getting everybody else saved all around me. You're so excited because you have this crazy revelation of who God is. And then about six months in the Lord starts bringing stuff up for you. And he's like, now we're going to deal with this. You're like, excuse me. I would like everything to be perfect. And you just realize that like you're continually throughout your life. The Lord is refining. You are being sanctified. You're becoming more like Christ. Things are getting poked in your life so that you can be healed and made whole. I find every time I sit at a dinner table with Jesse and Parker Green, um, again, we're just like trying to be, we're, we're family to each other. And I love it when Parker or Jesse says to me, I'm just going to give it to you straight. I'm like, yes. It's like, I can't stand it when people don't give it to me straight. I'm like, just slap me across the face and tell me the truth. Like, because I want to be free. I want to do whatever it takes to walk in freedom. So don't be offended by those areas that come up for you and are gross, um, but let those people close to you. Um, I don't, anybody else, when I got married, I realized like it was something I wanted so badly, but when I got married, I realized how self I was, selfish I was. And then when I had children, I realized how angry I was. And <laughs> I was like, oh, I have some like issues that I need to deal with. And then consider every other season you make new friends, other friends come in. Do I have jealousy issues? Do I have all these different issues that come into play? Like Jesse said earlier, the lies are clues. Where does the enemy tend to lie to you? Because those are usually clues to where you are called to have authority and where you need to be free. So um, big picture, and Jess, jump in at any time too, if there's anything you want to ping off of me in any of this, I'm just going to give you a couple of scriptures, and um, then I want to give you some areas to pay attention to. So um, we are aware that we are in a fight with two kingdoms, but let's just have a little refresher here. There are two kingdoms that are set up. And one that is mighty, one that has all authority, and one that is scraping and trying to do their best to take people down. So we know in Ephesians 6, 12, um, it says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So this is what I want us to understand. Um, where are my feelers and discerners on the on the Zoom? Okay. So maybe you fly into a certain city and you sense there is something over this place. There's a stronghold over this place. That is the militaristic structure of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness. There are powers and principalities that are over different regions and places. It's like they're the generals, but then they have their little minion demons. There are ranks and there are angels that have more authority. There are in the heavenly places. Do you understand? And so this is where we have to remember when we are poked by control, when we are poked and we feel rage, when we feel heaviness, we've got to go, why are these things coming up? Why do I want to throat punch my husband all day today? Like what? Of course it's his fault. No, it's probably my fault. Like God, what is this in me that I need healing and deliverance from? Where do you want to set me free today? Where do I need to break detrimental agreements? But that, this is what we have to understand there. There is, then there's the rulers of darkness and the spiritual hosts of wickedness. Those are the ones that usually are unleashed into our lives to oppress, to torment, to bother us, to speak to us, to lie to us. Does that make sense? But then if we have all authority in Jesus and we have the Holy Spirit and it says that angels are on assignment and they are here to minister, then why are we sitting back and going, God, like, save me, fix it. He's like, excuse me, stand up, rise up, sit up in your bed. This morning, I woke up with tormenting thoughts. I woke up with different things. I was like, excuse me, I'm just trying to wake up here. We must be starting the fire and freedom course today um, because I personally had some healing and deliverance that I needed to walk through for myself to even be able to stand here or I'm actually sitting to be able to sit here today. 
and be able to walk this through. So understanding the two kingdoms that are at work, but you are a part of the kingdom of light. We were watching Lord of the Rings over Christmas break. And there's this one, well, there's actually a prophecy about this. And Jesse, you can jump in and speak to this if you want to, or at the end. But do you guys remember anyone nerdy enough to watch Lord of the Rings like my family does? <laughs> so um, there's this woman well, there's this, there's this one dark force that cannot be killed by a man, right? And you remember that the, the woman who goes out to war and she's pretending to be a man, but when he's like, you know, um, no man can kill me. And she rips off her helmet and she goes, I am no man. And then she kills like the, basically the demon man. This is what we have to remember is that we have to remember we have authority in Christ as his daughters to rise up and be like, you don't get to talk to me like this. I'm going to tell you how this is going to go today because in waging war, which we are at war, I preach this word um, at our home church here, Sea Coast church on new year's Eve about it's time to wake up. And I feel like a lot of times what we do is we fall asleep to the war that's going on around us. And we're like, fix it, Jesus. Jesus, take the wheel. He's like, I have the wheel, but I'm going to need you to wake up and actually do what I'm asking you to do. And so 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, this is what we have to remember. For though we live in this world, and this is a refresher. You guys are like, we've read this. But again, we have to wake up to it, right? For though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And we demolish, our, uh, demolish arguments and every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to the mind of Christ. Okay, so this is where I'm going to bust through these really quickly because I do need to wrap up in four minutes. So I may touch on this. Jess, what do you think? Should I just touch on a few of these, not maybe all six that I was going to do, and then we'll dive in deeper later? What do you think? Yeah, I would do like a cliff notes maybe of them. You got and it. Then, okay. And then we can even next week go in like a little bit deeper on each one. And I would say too, ladies, as you're, as we're going through them, if there's any that you're like, okay, like, can we really talk about this? Let us know in the chat. Cause there might be somewhere everyone's like, okay, this is like the one or whatever. So just let us know in the chat. If there's right. something where you're like, I really, really, really want to know more about that. Okay. That's great. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to go gloss over this, but we can dive deep anywhere that you guys are like, please, we need to go there. So if all of authority has been given and the devil has none, then this is what we need to understand. Again, Emma Stark was teaching this and I kid you not, I got this teaching. And then I said, God, give me opportunity. The last few days I've been praying with other people that come alongside for deliverance in these certain areas and the spirit, like, like discernment of spirits has been like clear, like it's been crazy to be able to pray for people and even for myself and for my family. So what we have to understand is, like I said, militaristic destruction, who has heard the term? We've heard the term strongman. And you're like, what does that even mean? Well, in the militaristic structure of deliverance, there are strongman demons that actually are over at the top of the smaller ones that come to torment, lie, do all of these things in our lives. Let me read to you from Luke 11. If you've got your Bibles, you can go there. But this is where Jesus is bringing deliverance and praying for a deaf and dumb spirit. This boy gets delivered. The Pharisees say, you're casting this out by Beelzebub. And this is a house divided against itself cannot stand right so we've heard that before but then jesus says this when a strong man luke eleven twenty one 21 through 26 when a strong man fully armed guards his own house his possessions are safe but when someone's stronger jesus hello when he attacks and overpowers him he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder whoever jesus is saying if you do not if you are not one with me whoever is not with me is against me and whoever does not gather with me scatters so then it says this, now this is, you maybe heard this before and you're like, I don't want to do deliverance because I've heard this and this terrifies me. Well, let me break this down theologically. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through the arid places seeking rest and does not um, find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go to live there. Um, okay. So you've heard that and you're probably like, well, I don't want to do deliverance if that's going to happen. Well, no, you're one with Jesus. This is for, don't do deliverance on somebody that does not 
profess that Jesus Christ is Lord because it's going to get worse for them. This is for you. And so for you, what I want to do is I want to explain to you very quickly. I'm going to go through these, the strong man spirits. And Jesse, if at any point you're like, let's stop there, just interrupt me. Um, so the 12 strong man spirits and what they release. So picture the strong man as a gatekeeper that kind of pulls the strings and releases other things into your life. The first one is the spirit of jealousy and the spirit of jealousy, um, gatekeeps and controls envy, hatred. We're going to put this in notes for you. Okay. Um, envy, hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, vengefulness, anger, rage, violence, murder, profanity. Okay, this morning, I was dealing with the spirit of jealousy. That's what I woke up to. I was like, this is very weird, God. And so I had to sit up and operate and walk through. What do we do? What we do is we repent. Write this down. This is important for anything when you're just praying for yourself. Repent of partnering and agreeing with this. And then you bind it because you have to bind the strong man. And you cast it out to never return. And then you fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit and replace it with the truth. Okay. So just so you know, so the spirit of jealousy, the strong man of jealousy, let me go through the, the lying spirit. We're well acquainted, unfortunately, with this one, the lying spirit has bothered us all. And that is deception, exaggeration, falsehood, guile, false doctrine, false religion, craftiness, superstition, hypocrisy, self-deception. Um, okay. The next one is a familiar spirit. Like I said, I'm going to bust through these and then we're going to do Q and a, the familiar spirit, which controls witchcraft, Ouija, juju, Satanism, divination, witches, soothsayers, mediums, all of those things that have to do with witchcraft, because the familiar spirit is familiar with your ancestors and pretends and tells you that it's been speaking to them. So that's where witchcraft comes in. Do you understand way bigger than this? We can dive deep in any of these. The spirit of perversion, this one's pretty clear, um, but sexual immorality, any type of fornication, lust, adultery, pornography, prostitution, sexual practices forbidden by the word. The spirit of heaviness, at most times, many of us have come under a spirit of heaviness, which controls depression, despair, oppression, hopelessness, fatigue, chronic fatigue, exhaustion, paranoia. It can, it can control mental illness gluttony, grief, all of these things. So again, we can dive deep later. Um, this one is hilarious. And when Emma Stark taught it, I started laughing, but so did she, because it's the spirit of harlotry and whoredom. <laughs> and you're like, okay, well, that's not me. But she was saying most of the Western church deals with this because this is a spirit that wants what Satan values rather than what God values. So it's, it's bas your basic idol worship, which we've all set up idols. So ambition in the workplace to put others down, cosmetic surgery, the love of money, corruption, spirits of idolatry, self-love, self-worship, um, selfish compromise and love of the world. Okay. The, what was the last one? The last one was the, a hilarious one. The spiritual, the spirit of harlotry and whoredom. <laughs> um, Okay. The spirit of infirmity, infirmity, and that is the one that you go after. A lot of times we go after cancer or we go after suffering, but if you bind a spirit of infirmity, you are binding the strong man. Does that make sense? So you're taking authority over the strong man, and then you can pray over all of the other things. Um, deaf and dumb spirits, the strong man of deaf and dumb spirits. These are all sometimes hard to hear, but they're all in scripture. So epilepsy, fits, convulsions, speech loss, stuttering, deafness, dumbness, dyslexia. Hello, lots of different things, learning diff difficult, spirits released to suicide. Um, the, the strong man of the spirit of fear, I've got four more. I'm going through them quickly. We will put these in notes for you. You will be able to look at them. And the spirit of fear controls eating disorders, anxiety, phobias, compulsive behavior patterns, insomnia, terror, anguish, nightmares, worry, and inadequacy. The spirit of pride. Never dealt with that one before. I'm just so humble. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, spirit of pride, uh, the strong man of pride, haughtiness, brashness, arrogance, self-righteousness, refusal to listen, and all aspects of the Jezebel, Jezzy, um, which has to do with gossip and stubbornness. And the last one, uh, no, spirit of bondage. There's two more spirit of bondage, which is um, uh, controls uh, domination, manipulation, 
it can control OCD. So you have to be very gentle with that. Got people in my world that I am praying, believing for deliverance in that. All forms of religious cult and mind control, control and bullying relationships, corrupted core belief system. And the last one is the spirit of the Antichrist, um, which controls cults, creeds, false religion, secularism, atheism. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, Jesse, pop on in here. I have probably needed deliverance from almost all of those at some stage. <laughs> so this is where I'm saying, don't be afraid of this stuff. So that's why when I woke up and heaviness was trying to hit me, almost like go back to sleep. And I was like, excuse me. Um, and so jealousy, good. it was like in my ear. I was like, no, you don't get to be here. First of all, I repent for, for coming into any agreement with any of this. I bind you. I cast you out and Holy Spirit, fill me up. Show me what you're doing right now. What truth are you replacing me with this with? What scripture are you giving me? So that is very quickly. I went into all of that because it probably is poking different things. You're like, I have a question. <laughs> so Jess, over to you. If you want to yeah. touch on anything before we go to well, Q&A. I'll, we'll jump into Q&A. And um, obviously too, I know a lot of you are already a part of it. Some of you are new. We do have um, a most ardently community. Um, and Andy, I'll add you into there too, but on that most ardently community, that's where as well throughout the week, we can continue the conversation. So don't feel like, oh man, like, oh, there's so much. And we're going to obviously cover a lot too over the next five more weeks. But if there's something where you're like, I have a burning question, um, mm -hmm. that whole community is where we can talk about that stuff even I'm going to like have you guys level up, but like how Andy said this morning, she was dealing with jealousy and heaviness, right? Well, when stuff comes up for you, you don't have to do it, deal with it alone. So pop into that community, put up a thing and be like, Hey, really quick. I've got this going on. Can someone pray for me? And uh, we have right now about there's 300 women that are in most ardently. And these people are like on fire and so I just want to encourage you, like link arms with other people. I think that's one of the most important things the Lord's doing right now in this time is that you don't need to do this alone. You don't need to walk through this stuff by yourself. And so I just want to encourage you, if there's something that um, is burning within you, then let us know. Yes, the group is on Facebook, Jill. And I know some people are anti-Facebook. I would say you could just make an account with no picture and use it just to <laughs> get access to that group. Um, so we will touch on more of that next week um, and kind of deep dive into some of those things. I just want to encourage you again, when you log into jesse-green.com, you can see all of the notes. So we'll add that stuff in today. Um, and just remember to, to simply repent bind, cast out and ask for the Holy Spirit to fill you. So I felt like that was very helpful. And so I just want to encourage you guys. Um, and uh, if you have any questions or anything to any issues with signing up, just email team at saturateglobal.com. Um, and Shelby, who's on here, um, she will be the one answering you. So Shelby's mm -hmm. the beautiful young lady. Um, who lives in Washington, who will be the one answering you. Um, mm. So really quickly, let's just do this before we get into Q&A. Um, so uh, obviously there's a lot here. Um, I just want to encourage you guys to like, wherever the ho Holy Spirit is like highlighting something to you, I just want to encourage you, don't talk yourself out of it. Um, I think it's really important just to say that because a lot of times we're like, well, like that kind of highlighted to me, but I, like that can't be it. Or I've already gotten deliverance from that, or that's not an issue or whatever. And I just want to encourage you to press into it because there might be a reason why the Holy Spirit's saying like, pay attention to this. So I know, and again, I love that Andy shared just with vulnerability this morning, what she had to overcome. Um, and I just want to encourage you guys that it is a journey and a process, um, but to have all authority, remembering that, but one of the biggest things is being honest. So not lying to <laughs> yourself and not lying to the people around you. Um, so let's open it up to Q and A. I'm going to put um, the gallery on here. So if you have a question, 
just go like this with your hand. Just like wave your hand like this. Okay. Jenny, I, I know it says Aaron, but I know that that's Jenny. So I'm going <laughs> to unmute you. Hey, hey girl. Hi. hi. Um, I wrote my question because I wasn't sure if we were going to type it or not, but um, I'll just read what I wrote. So I said, would you say that it would be fear if there's concern of not wanting to fully step into boldness because you feel like you're the most bold in your circle a lot of the time? Um, because I find myself like I, I do walk in boldness a lot, but sometimes I feel myself hold back because maybe a friend that I'm with um, is more insecure and it's like, I don't want to trigger their insecurity. And I also don't want to look prideful when I'm like, the Lord is telling me to go speak to this person or say this or do this or pray for healing. And it's like this um, conflict I have within me. And I don't know if it's fear or what it is. It's like, I don't want other people to feel insecure or offended even sometimes. Um, Jenny, do you want to speak to that? Go ahead. Yeah, I'll speak to that. So, and we can talk more about this. And Andy, if you want to just put in our notes for like the future, um, mm -hmm. but I always feel like there's this reoccurring theme and it really is like the fear of man. And it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it's the fear of man. Cause a lot of times we, I would say like, we put fear of man in this category of like being afraid of, like what people think of us and they're like, well, I'm super bold. Like, it's not that, but it is that because we're still putting the thoughts of what people perceive, um, in front of even obedience to Christ. Mm -hmm. And so it is fear. And the reason why it's fear. And <clears throat> sometimes I think the enemy will even use our desires to be compassionate and loving, yeah. um, as a way to manipulate and control us. So, um, something that's so important is like, we have to remember again, like Eve was not tempted in the garden to like become a Satan worshiper, right? Like she was tempted in the garden to be like, like God, like her desire to be like God is what he manipulated. And, um, I think it's important to remember as women, like we want to be perceived as kind and loving and compassionate, especially if you're like a whistleblower or you're like a pioneer or like super radical, that's going to be the lie that the enemy uses against you because he's going to try to silence your voice and be like, well, you're so cold. You're so guys. And you can just pop onto my Instagram and see, like, I get accused all the time of like, not being compassionate, not being loving. Like I'm, I mean, horrible in all the billion different ways. <laughs> and, and there's this desire to be want, wanting to be understood. And uh, I think that again, though, that falls into the camp of fear of man, because there's just going to be some things that you cannot explain. And there's going to be some things that the Lord is going to ask you to do that actually will trigger people. And it will trigger maybe their disobedience even. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just want to encourage you that um, you can't allow other people's reactions and responses to hinder you from being obedient to the Lord and their issues are their issues. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, but I, I, I just want to encourage you, especially if you're on this call and you struggle with that, um, in any way that you actually just ask the Lord to show you that your heart is compassionate, that you are loving and get, a. Uh, like get that affirmation from him, even if the people are saying the opposite, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Is there any, let's see, let's go back to the gallery. Give me a wave. If you have a question. Okay, Paige. Paige. Mm -hmm. Hey. So what happens when you pray the prayers or whatever, and you don't get delivered? What happens when you pray the prayers and you don't get delivered? Sometimes you yeah. are peeling back the layers. That's what I've found. So, so for me, um, I mean, okay, can I just share a couple of resources? So even for me, I wrote this book in 2016. It's called She is Free. And it's learning the truth about the lies that hold you captive. And this was for me at the very beginning, this was 
this deliverance that I was walking through with unforgiveness and all of these different things where God was really setting me free. But then I'd step into another season and it was almost like those things try to come back and I'm, and it's just a constant fight. This is the biggest thing that I've learned. You can be free, but we're at war. So you'll be walk through this season where you're like, man, I have been set free in all of these different things. And then something comes and tries to attach itself to you, talk to you, lie to you. And it's this vigilance that started to make me really mad. I was like, is this really the Christian walk that I have to be this wide awake all the time? And I have to be this suited up in my armor at all times. I'm like, ugh, like I just, I just want it once Jesus. And he's like, no, I am in you and you are in me. So girl, get up again and fight again. So I think that's a huge part of my story. And Jesse, I want you to speak to this too, is that, like I said this morning, I've done deliverance. I have had deliverance sessions. I have, I, I am willing to do whatever it takes, but some of the stubborn stuff you've got to, maybe, maybe this one comes out with fasting and praying. Maybe you need to take more time and just be like, Lord, I'm going after this. I know that all authority is mine. Maybe you need to not be alone. And there's got to be other people that come in with you and pray for you. Like sometimes I've had to have family come in and pray for me. I need to bring my husband in and go, I'm trying to do this on my own. I have to not be isolated and tell people like, I'm going to need you to lay hands on me. I feel a little bit embarrassed about this, but I need freedom. So um, that's one way that I would speak to that. But don't, I think for me, like the enemy would love to silence us and put shame on us. Like, oh, you should be free of that. It's like, okay, well, I'm noticing that some of this is still here. So don't let that lie or shame or the need to be perfect and have it all together um, keep you silent. I even did that in my relationship with Jesse for a while. I was in a, a dark place. I was not doing well. And her and Parker were kicking butt. And I was like, I suck. They're doing great. I'm not like, but I could, I could either just stay there. or I could be like, you know what? I want what you have now. So I need you and I need you in my life. Does that make sense? So it's kind of paying attention to the season you're in. What do you need? And just keep going to war. Jesse, would you say, what else would you say? Yeah, I think that's so, that is so true and so good. And the word that I keep hearing in my head over and over again is like, when it comes to deliverance, honesty is the best policy. And yeah. obviously we know that when we apply that to so many things, but I think being honest with ourselves um, and being honest with those around us is super important. And I just want to say with that too, um, so one of the main things I've learned with deliverance is the enemy only has authority with an agreement. So yeah. the reality is, is sometimes we think we've broken an agreement, but we, we haven't yet. And the enemy still has permission there. Um, and so I just want to encourage you. One thing you can do is let's say, and then make us like, let's say you're dealing with depression, right? And you're like, I got deliverance. I've walked through the prayers, blah, but there's somewhere that you are still believing and agreeing that like, this is just your lot in life. And you're going to just struggle with this and no one really understands and blah, blah, blah. And then there goes the swirl. And all of a sudden that thing has agreement again. And so I just want to encourage you, and I'm just going to say this is going to be a little harsh, but I love all of you. Okay. But if you are on this call and you are a Christian and you are a follower of Jesus, okay, no matter what has happened to you, you are not a victim and through Jesus, you are victorious. And I know that we live in a Christian age that wants you to put all of your effort and energy about rehashing trauma. And I just want to encourage you that sometimes you need to let it go and walk mm -hmm. in newness of life. So one of the things we do when we baptize people is say, listen, when you go into that water, all of the trauma that happened to you, we're actually going to leave it in the water and you can't bring it up again. And that's really triggering for a lot of people because so many of us, myself included for a long time, we formed an identity around our trauma stories. And we didn't realize that we actually liked living in the camp of that trauma and had our little trauma community around us there. And we don't realize that we have all of our friends that also have depression 
And uh, we don't realize that that's preventing from us getting full breakthroughs. So I want to encourage you, like, identify the trauma, let the Holy Spirit heal it, but don't live in it, right? Like there's going to be a point where you stop telling those stories. So there are lots of people I meet and they have no idea the trauma that I walked through because I don't bring it up over and over and over again because I don't live there. I live in newness of life. I live in the new things that the Lord is doing and that's available for all of you. So you don't need to build your entire identity, your entire ministry, your entire community around what's happened to you in the past. Okay. So mm. I want to encourage you, like release yourself from that captivity of that story. Um, and then Paige, for you to just one thing is, I know that this sounds silly, but um, you're allowed to be frustrated when mm. you're not walking in full deliverance and take that to the Holy Spirit. So when you're wrestling with stuff and you're like, man, this is still a thing, you have full permission to say to the Lord, like, I want to be done with this and like go to war for yourself. And I think that's something we don't really teach so much in the American church is actually fighting in the secret place and like being real with the Lord. So there are times where I need to say to the Lord, like I, like there was two years where I would pray every single day and say, Holy Spirit, I am frustrated to the core of my inability to see the sick healed. Like I'm so sick and tired of laying hands on the sick and not seeing them recover. And I would just pray day in and day out about that. And I was like, this is what your word says, but my reality is not matching that. Mm -hmm. And that bothers me. And it's okay to be honest with the Lord about the things that you're wanting to see breakthrough in. So um, I hope that helps you, Paige. That's yeah. So good. yeah. Yeah. One, one thing there's a real, I'm going to answer this really quickly. There's a great question in the chat too, from grace that said, how do you best contend or direct direct prayer for others? Even in your household, if you see the strong man over them in your house, when it isn't just specific to you. So there's a couple of things there. I'm just going to give you two things. If the person is like, you know what I mean? Like you have this certain age where you kind of know it ticks over and it's like, Ooh, you have a choice to follow Jesus or not. So like, I've got an 11 year old, a 15, a 16, an 18 year old, my 15, 16 and 18 year old, they need to be able to partner and go, I have Jesus in me. I actually want to be delivered of this and to pray for them. Does that make sense? I can always, I can intercede for them. I can intercede for my husband. If I ever saw any of this, I can intercede. I can have honest conversations with them because that's where my relationship is at with them. But with like my 11 year old, there's even a few things I'm contending for right now. God's been giving me dreams. And even my daughter had a dream. She goes, this is a dream I had last night. And the Lord revealed to her like a certain way to pray for him. And it was one of the strong men. Actually, I was like, oh my gosh. So um, watching my little twerp, like work through some stuff that I really love. Um, but I'm going, oh, well, I have authority over him in a different way. I'm like, you get out of here. You don't get to have authority over my son. But do you see what I'm saying? There comes this age where you're like, mm, that's an agreement they're making. I need to help them walk through it. So it depends on the relationship you have with the person. I think that's a really good question. Intercession is always amazing to be able to pray over someone. God reveal to them, open the eyes of their heart, Lord, that they would be fully aware of your presence in their life and what they have agreement with that is not healthy or helpful for them. So I just wanted to answer that because, um, and it's a very quick answer, but, um, I hope that helps a little bit to dive into. That's so good. That's so good. And obviously I know you guys have a lot of questions, so mm -hmm. we have to wrap up for today, but we have five more weeks, which is really exciting. So um, make sure, again, any questions that you have, you can just, again, pop into the community um, and we will answer those to the best of our ability in there. And uh, you'll also have a group of women that are on fire to walk this out with, which is so important. It's the whole reason I started ardently was because I was so tired of speaking at conferences and meeting women that were burning on fire for God. And then they didn't have other people to run with, or they didn't have other people that understood or to just tell them the truth. 
And so we're really excited for you guys in this journey. Um, yes, the group is on Facebook. Um, so you get a monthly subscription and that gives you full access to that group. Um, and then we're going to be starting this week as well. Um, Friday night or Friday day fire sessions where we'll just pop on there um, and do some prayer as well. So I'm really excited about that. Um, next week, um, we are talking about fear and love. So we're going to talk about the Jezebel spirit. Um, we're going to talk about like what the love of Jesus actually does in your life and how to be a person that I don't know if this matters to you, but I think it's super important, like that actually like represents the love of Christ, because you should look different as a Christian, like your Christianity should be attractive to those around you. It says in Romans 11 that your Christianity should actually provoke jealousy to the Jewish mm -hmm. community. Like it should be working so yeah. much that it convinces people that Jesus is the Messiah. So we'll get into all of that next week. Um, so we love you guys. Um, remember again, the two giveaways that we have happening um, is share with your friends. They get $20 off with promo code friend. Um, and then if you refer a friend, you get a free water bottle. And then also to share the graphics on social media, tag Andy and I, um, and uh, we'll choose five people to get an ardently hat. So we will see you guys next Wednesday. Um, Andy, do you want to just pray for everyone as we close out? Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for already revealing things to us. We are so grateful that, Jesus, you want us more free than we even want to be. And you want us to walk in authority more than we even know that we want to. So God, where we are hungering and thirsting for other things, would you cause us to hunger and thirst for you? Would we stop consuming things that do not feed us or help us and begin to consume more of you? I pray that you would be a consuming fire for all of us in all of our lives, that we would truly be more delivered, more healed, that even next week as we gather together, some of these women will tell stories and give testimony to, I laid hands on my head. I told the spirit of heaviness to go and it changed everything. Even if they had to contend and do it the next morning again, say, you don't belong here, go away. We just will walk in it. God will do whatever it takes, but I just bless these women. I thank you for them. I'm excited for all that is to come. We give this time to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Um, really quick, and we won't do this every week, but we will always follow the Holy Spirit. Um, I do have a word for one person that I'm going to share, and I feel like I'd be Ooh. in disobedience if I didn't share it. So I'm going to add them on here really quick. So it says John McIntosh, but obviously you're not John, you're a girl. Um, but um, I'll have you unmute in a second. But as Andy was talking earlier about fear of man, um, you like your picture was just like really like highlighted to me. And I really felt like the Lord was going to use you specifically to set people free from fear of man's opinions. And I really saw you training and raising up a lot of women that walk in boldness. And I just felt like the Lord wanted me to say over you, don't believe the lies from the enemy. You actually are super bold and thinking of that Lord of the Rings scene where she's like, I am no man. The Lord is like, you have done battles in secret. And uh, the enemy knows that and knows the power that you carry and is trying, especially in this season in particular, is really trying to silence you. And so all the ardently women, can you just like stretch out a hand right now? You can put your hands on the screen if you want. Um, but right now in the name of Jesus, I just like right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, just open up your mouth to speak. I pray that the women that you are called to rally and to mobilize, there's a, like a mobilization anointing on your life. And the enemy has just trying like really hard, especially like in this season to stop it. And I pray right now that all of his attacks, all of his strategies, that they would just come down now in the name of Jesus right now, Holy Spirit, we release right now vision and revelation 
to come over you. I pray that today, as you're just doing like mundane tasks, you would start to see pictures and visions of the assignment that the Lord has given to you. I believe you already know what that assignment is, but it's become dormant. And so right now on January 24th, we reawaken that dream and vision in you. And I pray that this right now would be a sign to you that you are not crazy. This is an assignment from the Lord. You are not making it up in your head. The enemy keeps saying to you, it's all in your head. You're making this up. And the Lord says, no, today I have like just told Jesse on this ardently call in front of all of these women to say like, you are not making this up. You are not crazy. We stand in agreement with you and we have your back. And so we right now just thrust you forward to step in boldness and to rally the women around you to walk in newness of life and power. There's an assignment on you to make war. Like I just keep seeing over you the words, just make war, make war, make war. You're going to move from like an offensive, like a defensive position to an offensive position. And so we just release that over you. And I'm just, I'm going to unmute you for a second. And would you mind just sharing with us um, if you feel bold enough to do so? Um, like, what are some of the things that the Lord is like showing you that we can rally around you in? And what's your name? Because I know it's not John. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, my name is April McIntosh. My John, my husband is John. I am a, now a hot mess. So um, you just have to have to hang in there. I can hardly move right now because his presence is so you, real right now. Um, man, um, I have no idea why I'm doing this. Um, Andy Andrew uh, spoke at a uh, an art conference seven years ago. My husband and I planted a church. You were there and uh, impacted my life when you spoke seven for seven or seven minutes each or whatever. Um, and uh, anyways, long story short, at the beginning of the year, the Lord brought Andy Andrews, which is an author uh, who lives in our city and has now allowed us to meet him. And now I'm hanging out meeting Andy Andrews. Both emails came at the same time. It's been wild. Okay. So um, that's awesome. Any, interestingly enough, my husband and I, my husband is the pastor at um, a place called Worship on the Water. And uh, we meet in uh, the world famous Floribama. I don't know if any of you women, <laughs> you've been there. You've been there. I've been okay. to Floribama. I've been so, there. Yep. So, uh, so uh, wildly enough, I'd never been there. And it's probably the only bar in Alabama that I hadn't been to before Christ. So now I'm at the Floribama on a Sunday morning and God is saving people in a ridiculous way on Sunday mornings. Um, people come from all over the world and we're just seeing them be saved. And so anyways, when I got saved a long time ago, he, I, he allowed me to have a vision for like women just before me. And I have ward, I have ward for years. And um, now he's opened this door for me to speak on the beach. And so we've had conference, you know, a conference on the beach. And wildly enough, I'm doing another one um, on March 2nd, which is going to be the last week of this uh, course. And um, I've been really hesitant on it because I'm like, well, wonder if no one shows back up, you know, I'm like, wonder if I terrified them, you know, the first, um, you know, ladies conference. And uh, so anyways, that's what's going on uh, in, uh, in wow. my world. So thank you for <laughs> listening to the Holy Spirit. As you were praying, I was like, she really did say my name, right? She said, Josh, <laughs> right? So um, thank you for being obedient. I, I believe um, that he's moving and I, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to be with you yeah. ladies. April, so cool. And I would love it if um, you can just email us and let us know the information because um, I'm sure several women on here would love to come and support you. And so, yeah, if you can share that with us, we'll share that with everyone too. Cause it's one of my favorite thing when we all just get together in real life. Cause I actually hate meeting online. So when we can get together in real life, it's amazing. And I, I know many of the women here would love to support you. Awesome. So that's yeah. awesome. Thank you, April. Yeah. All right. So, so we will see you guys next week and uh, make sure to, if you have throughout the week, any questions that come up, just write them down. 
Um, and obviously we have just a short amount of time together, but we will try to cover everything we can. Um, we love you guys. And um, this will be up live um, on the course next tomorrow within 24 hours. So, um, all right. So you guys can all unmute. If everyone wants to say goodbye. That's my favorite. Goodbye. 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 Voices. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.